So here's you, right, as a creator in the middle of the thing. And we think you're good. That's why we've put the nice starry things around you, right? And when, when we're thinking about your creative identity, well, then it's natural to kind of just focus in on you and to think about what other distinctive things about you. But there's, it's also the case that there's all sorts of other stuff that might be sort of getting in the way. And as well as clarifying what is your creative identity, we also need to think about what's basically getting in the way and what do we need to pull out of the way to get at that. There's also nice little jewels. So there might be nice things that also get in the way, like uh, like other creatives sort of in the same kind of sphere who can mess up your conception of what you're meant to be doing because you think, well, I'm quite like them and I'd like to be like them. So you get drawn to the little jewels, but the little jewels are irrelevant, as I will also explain. So we need to cut away the ivy stuff with this very high class animation. Look at that ding, ding, ding. We need to cut away all of that stuff to get at you. So there's you there, right? And then there's other people you admire. There's always going to be other people making stuff that you think you're just drawn to it and you think it's good. And so even if you don't really mean to, you sort of can't help wishing that you did stuff like them, I think. Like certainly with music, if anything you listen, if you make music yourself, then you listen to other people's music. If something's good, you sort of just start wishing you could do that. <laughs> um, so. You want to do something like what they do. It's kind of understandable, I think. Like, there's something really good. You think, oh, it'd be great if I could do something like that. That's a normal kind of thought, I think, to have. And similarly, uh, if you do paintings or poetry or something else, uh, ceramics, whatever, it's quite natural to see other people's things and think, oh, yeah, I should really head in that direction. That seems really good because it's really appealing and good because what they've done is good. So you naturally want to head towards that. The trouble with that is they already do that thing. They will always be better at that than you would. So it's a it's a false kind of aspiration. There's no choice, therefore. There is no choice. You have to do your own thing. It's the only thing you've got, and that's what makes you distinctive and special. So anytime when you're just trying to be more like somebody else, there's no point, because they already do that. So they, A, they've conquered that territory already, as it were, and B, you're never going to be quite like them anyway, because they already do that and you're not gonna be able to do it just like them because that's hard and not gonna happen anyway because you've got your own distinctive identity so the thing is you want to hold on to your distinctive identity because that is the actual thing that is good so there's you you get your nice uh shiny starry things around again and look you in the middle distinctive and special so that's a good thing so it's like you can't be like you can't be exactly like anybody else anyway and that's fine because the good thing is what makes you distinctive and special. That's the, that's the good bit. So you don't need to be like somebody else anyway, and it's all good. <laughs> that's for if you're being drawn towards certain other things and wishing you could be like them. There's no point. It's good that you're distinctive and special anyway. Right.